let's do a summary of all of our trigonometric identities. First ones are the reciprocal identities. It's actually six of them since we have six trigonometric functions. So let's start with uh, the sine of angle theta. That's the reciprocal of the cosecant of the angle. Cosine of theta is the reciprocal of secant. Tangent of theta is the reciprocal of cotangent of theta. And then the other three just come from taking these reciprocals on the right side and then the reciprocal of the left side. So then the fourth one would be that the cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of sine. Secant of theta is the reciprocal of cosine. So then the cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of tangent. Another set of identities we have are the quotient identities, which defines our tangent and our cotangent in terms of sine and cosine. So tangent of theta is sine over cosine. So then the cotangent of theta is just the reciprocal of tangent, so cosine over sine. And our next set of identities are the Pythagorean identities, and there's three of them. First one is that the sine squared plus cosine squared of the angles is one. The other two come from the first one. So if I were to divide both sides by, let's say, the cosine squared, we would end up with tangent squared plus one. The reciprocal of cosine squared is cos or secant squared. If I were to take the first equation and divide both sides by sine squared, we would have one plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. And the next set of identities come from the complementary angle theorem. So again, complementary means that two angles add up to 90 degrees. So let's say we have the sine of theta. It's co-function, it's cosine. The complementary of theta would be 90 minus theta. Or you can write this in terms of radians, so 90 degrees is pi over 2. Same thing. So then cosine could also be seen as the sine of 90 minus theta. So we'll just assume that one within this first one here. So the next one will be uh, tangent. So tangent of theta will be its co-function, cotangent, again of 90 minus theta. Or again, if you want to write that in radians, it's fine. So that also means that cotangent is tangent of 90 minus theta. So then the third set will be secant of theta is equal to its co-function, so cosecant, of 90 minus theta. Or again, in radians. So if we put all of these together, let's do a couple examples of finding some values using these identities. So let's say I want to find the sine of 28 degrees minus the cosine of 62 degrees. First thing I notice is that 28 and 62 are complementary. So maybe I should be using the complementary angle theorem. So let me change maybe the second one from cosine of 62 into sine of 90 minus 62. In other words, sine of 28 degrees minus sine of 28 degrees, so this is actually zero. Let's try another one. Say the tangent of 35 degrees divided by the cotangent, 55 degrees. So again, I noticed that 35 and 55 are uh, complementary angles, so I should probably use the complementary angle theorem. So let me change, oh, maybe I'll change tangent this time into its co-function cotangent of 90 minus 35. So we end up with cotangent of 55 degrees over itself. 
So this is actually one. Let's look at one more. Let's say we have the sine of 10 degrees times the cosine of 80 degrees plus cosine of 10 degrees times sine of 80 degrees. So again, the first thing I notice is that 10 and 80 are complementary angles, so I should probably use the complementary angle theorem. So let me change maybe that cosine into a sine. The complementary angle of 80 is 10. Now before I continue, notice that this is sine squared, 10 degrees. So starting to look like one of our Pythagorean theorems, or identities, which is sine squared plus cosine squared. So I think for the second one, I should write everything in terms of cosine. So let me keep cosine of 10 degrees and change sine into cosine of its complementary angle, which is 10 degrees. So if you look at that, I have sine squared of an angle plus cosine squared of the same angle. This is actually one.